Hi everybody and welcome to my Unruly Housewife channel and my very untidy studio, don't look. <laughs> Today I'm going to show you uh, how to make this spiral decorated pen. This is all slices of polymer clay on a big stick, round stick pen. It's not expensive to make, it didn't take long to make and it's going to be very easy for beginners. If you've always wanted to try decorating a pen or making a cane and you've never done it, this is the very thing for you to start off on. I promise you it's easy. Let's do the tutorial now. So first of all let's look at the kind of pen we're going to use and I use big round stick pens. They're nice and inexpensive and they do the job just fine. They survive in the oven but first of all we've got to uh, We'll take it apart and chuck the lid away because that's not going to fit when it's got clay on it. Um, you might want to make a little stand to put it in or something. But anyway, we'll crack on. It's a big round stick pen. It's in this kind of soft grey, slightly opaque kind of um, plastic. It's not that crystal clear brittle kind. That doesn't work. That will go like a banana in the oven. So these are the ones that you want to use and you have to take this part here out. Sometimes you can do it with your fingers. Sometimes you need pliers. Now I um, put a bit of tape over the black part there and use pliers with some rubber bands on or you might have those fancy pliers with soft tips and take it out that way. But there's a video about how I do that and that's going to be linked on the end card to this video. So hang in there. Um, once you've taken this out, you can put it to one side because the thing is we don't want to bake the um, ink, that's not a good idea. And you can just rub the case with a bit of sandpaper and that will rough it up for you. A treat, look at that. And that might help the clay to cling on. I do it, I, I think it probably does help, but it may not be necessary. Our clay is here, I've already rolled it out and cut out some strips. It is um, Fimo Soft, this clay. I went. I didn't go for soft for any particular reason other than I like this colour here, which is prune or plum, depending on which. Uh, it's on there in different languages. <laughs> and one's prune, one's plum. I've done white there as well, and I'm going to lay the white on top of the uh, plum. And I've kind of made the white shorter, because I think that's going to help me to do this. Now I haven't made a spiral cane for a long time, so let's see if it works. The um, the amount I've got there is about half, half a packet of each, just more than half a block of each. But if you think about it, think about your pen, you know, that's plenty to cover that pen, I think. And that's the way to look at it. And I'm going to use some little bits of this as well in between. So just think about it in terms of, you know, it's not going to be very thick. That will be enough. People often say to me, you know, how much, how much will I need? How much clay will I need to cover, you know, object A? And and I say, well, I know, you know, a jar or something. And I think, well, how big is the jar? I don't know. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is just curl this end here over, and then so that that's not going to fold onto itself the white and then I'm just going to roll this up together Oops. let's do this gently I put this uh, these strips through the pasta machine on number one which is the second thickest setting it's not that much different to zero I don't think I've got an atlas um, and I'm rolling this here and I left some extra purple at this end too because I want to um, make sure that my cane is completely surrounded by purple because that's going to be the background colour of my um, pen and what I did there was accidentally break the purple <laughs> off oh dear so I'm going to add a little bit in this is real life folks Oops. Okay, I've made a little strip to black block that in. Dear. I, I just want it to be all purple because it, then it'll be white spirals on a purple background. And if there's any uh, little places that need 
filling in. I can do little balls of purple, but I'll show you that in a minute. So here's our, our cane. Oh dear. And it's quite soft. You're going to get distortion on this. I'm not even going to try to not do it with distortion. I'm just going to roll it out. Because this is a fun, easy, cheap way to make a little covered pen, you know. I'm not... Um, trying to set the world on fire but if you're a beginner people are going to be so impressed when you turn around and say I made this decorated pen and now I need to elongate this cane so that I can um, slice it up I'm going to use this which actually looks a bit grubby doesn't it I hope it's alright and roll my cane. I'm going to squeeze the middle. Don't do too much rolling. If you've got lines on your cane and you try to keep them straight, that helps it to not be distorted. I might have uh, chilled this down in the fridge or something before doing it if I wasn't doing it on camera for this project. But we need to crack on, don't we? You can put cane caps on the end. Can like make your own out of plastic or they sell them on tinypandora.com but again I'm just jumping straight in and making it I'm aiming this kind of at beginners and if you are a beginner it's a good idea to use colors like purple and white or something or rather than you know pink and black because if pink and black if it all goes horribly wrong you end up with a nasty weird grey I, I imagine but um, if you use purple and white what are you going to get you know it's a nice violet colour if it all goes wrong you smush it all together so <laughs> I was thinking I was thinking towards what I would do when it's a failure now before I carry on I'm going to take a part of this cane while it's still quite big oh look that's okay it's coming out nice um, I'm going to take a part of this and save it while it's still bigger. Hmm, how much? Let's say about a third because we can always reduce it if we need to. And um, I'm keeping this to one side for one reason. I want to make a little cap to go over the end of my pen. And also just because it's good practice. So, by good practice I mean a good thing to do, not... It's not practicing. Okay, so here we go. I wonder how much of this I'm going to edit out. Oh, I'll, I'll leave that there actually. See, if we had cane caps on there or something, it would we wouldn't have as much waste as that. But how small do we want it? Well, look at the proportion of our pen. We're going to have spirals over it. We want them to be quite small. I'd like to get two or three little ones round wrapped around the edge here. So I want it to be smaller than that. So I'm going to carry on reducing it, right. I'm just pulling, twisting. I see that line is still kind of keeping straight. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's still keeping straight. So that is helping to show me that it's not getting too distorted. Let's have a look. I'll come back when I've reduced this even further and then I'll show you how we apply it to the pen. I'm back now and I've made the spiral canes into three different sizes or this spiral cane into three different sizes. Um, <laughs> these two are pretty similar. And now I'm going to um, cut it up and put it onto my pen. Now I might have chilled them Again, I'm saying that in real life. I just want to get this done. It's so dark today. It's been really raining badly. I've got so many lights on, you wouldn't believe it's the afternoon. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm putting my... I've sliced these up and I've kind of done them reasonably thick. Not too thick, not too thin. 
and I'm now applying them to the end of the pen and I'm sort of keeping them slightly over that end there and I'm hoping they're going to stick. I've just done three slices and I won't have all my spirals going in the same direction because I'm going to try and vary it up a bit. So I'll put that on there. I, don't know if you, I hope you can see this. I've got the lights pointing at this so it's hard for me to see the screen. <laughs> And then in that gap there, I'll put that. I'm putting them so they're just about touching because when I roll them, they're going to spread out and I don't want them to each spiral to overwhelm the other, which I'm slightly in danger of doing there, actually, but still. Um, I put them around the end and you might be able to see there because the end is quite a weird bit. They're sort of overhanging and I'm just going to roll them a little and we'll trim that in a moment and if there's any gaps I might put in some of this. Let's continue. I'll cut up a few. When you're um, slicing try and keep them all a reasonably similar thickness. Not like I'm doing now. And as I say don't do it too thin because it's going to spread out on the pen. And then I would aim this, sorry I'm left handed, um, I would aim this into the gaps, let me turn this around, between there, so it kind of staggers it a little bit, but it probably won't fit exactly. I'm just laying them around like tiles. Now here I've got a bit of a funny gap and I don't really want to... Um, the spiral too close in there let me show you there's like a little there's a slightly bigger gap in the middle there and I don't really want the spiral to go into it so I'm going to put a little dot of clay about the same thickness as the slices into that hole but it's, it mustn't be too big because I don't want it to push the spiral out of the way but I'm doing that to show you what it is I do it's all trial and error really and you know if, if you use this the colors that uh, stay well together you don't even have to bake it do you, you can just practice make your colors into a light mauve and carry on <laughs> start again um, again I'm putting the dots little balls into the big gaps but mostly I'm hoping the canes are going to fill those gaps up whoops I've seen people doing them with their slices that came very far apart, but mine aren't really thick enough for that. I don't think so anyway. If, if they are thick, then leave them a little bit further away. And I like to... Um, oops, I'm just doing the opposite. I like to make them so that they're not all going the same direction if I can. I think I mentioned that just now but I'm just reiterating it. Sometimes you get a problem like this where you've got a gap which isn't really big enough for a spiral. That might take a bit of readjustment but if you if you will need to readjust them you know it's not uh, not terribly difficult. And you could always uh, just pull your spiral out a little bit, then pop it in. Because we're, we're just looking for a bit of fun. I'm conscious of how much of this is due to me having so much practice. But the only way you, that you can learn how to do something is to do the work, as they say. So, you know, don't be afraid. Jump in. It's about one of the cheapest pens you could buy, so you're not you're not got anything to lose. I put this into here, just in case. Stop my um, spiral from going in to fill the gap, because it's a big gap. And the spiral there. And when I've got um, more spirals on, I will come back and show you the next step. 
Right, I'm back and um, this is how far I've got. I've uh, come all the way up here. Some of these kind of ended up going in lines, which was annoying <laughs> and completely my own fault. But I've done a pretty good job of randomising them. And now we come up to the end and this is kind of a bit of, um, a, bit of a fiddly transition. So I thought I'd do it on camera for you. So I've taken a slice of my really big cane and I've put that over the end, <clears throat> excuse me, and I'm going to try and bend it round, splitting a little bit there, I'll try and bend it over, if it doesn't work I'll try another slice. I quite like the quirkiness of having the big spiral on the end of the pen. I'm just going to roll this between my fingers because it's all going to be rolled in the end. I think that's gone all right. <laughs> Don't throw your cane slice on the floor like I just did. It is a bit of a uh, job doing this, fitting them in here. I think that's okay. Just give them a little roll between your fingers, you'll see how the land's lying. That looks okay. Wish I hadn't dropped that bit on the floor. Put that there. I just need one more in here and I might have to make room for it. As with a lot of things with polymer clay, it's a bit of a compromise. Uh, I'm going to elongate it a little. Right. So I think I need to just trim out this bit here a bit. So as not to cause a big wadge of clay. Let's see what I can do. I'm trying to make sure I do it on camera. I want there to be some purple between this spiral and that one if I can. That is quite a big spiral on the end. Maybe I <laughs> maybe I should have gone for a slightly smaller one. But it's quite fun. So let's go with it. And something sharp. Not ideal this, but still. I like to make a little hole in the end, just in case any air needs to escape. So I don't want to create a bubble under the end there. Would have been better to have used something smaller, I think, but that will do. And now, in order to get this all to join together, we have to roll it. Oh, and I've got gold on me from whatever that was I used. Good Lord. Okay, let's give this a wipe. Never panic when things like that happen because you can. we need to um, sand this anyway, so it doesn't matter. I'm now going to put some gloves on. I don't usually wear rubber gloves when I'm making things, but in this instance, because there's a lot of white there and because I'm um, rolling it between my hands a lot, I think gloves might be a good idea. Just give it a little squeeze, roll it around so that these things start to join together. Because at the minute you see they're quite separate. You can see that. But I want them to be one thing, one sheet of clay over my pen. So I can use this to roll it. That's a good, uh, good idea. I can use the warmth of my hands to roll it because I'm using Fimo soft it doesn't really it's not so reliant on the warmth and sometimes I just um, also push um, up and down as well because what I'm trying to do is get the clay and sort of do it at an angle as well 
I'm trying to get the clay to smudge into each other, all the pieces to smush together and fill up all the little gaps. I can't see any massive gaps, I don't think. Let's concentrate a bit on this end here. I'm going to have to trim this, of course, so that we can get the uh, actual ink into the pen. Just pushing down. Now there, something bad's happened there. A piece of clay has covered it. Well, I'll trim it a little bit. Hmm. I'm cutting that off. I don't want to do too much, and we are sanding it, but yeah, I think that might sand off that bit. We shall see. I'm kind of carved a lump out of it now. <laughs> That's not a good idea. Oh dear, life, it's all compromise, isn't it? So, a bit more of this. This does work excellently, actually. That might be how I got a bit of purple on it, mind. Just look for places like that where it's not working particularly well and keep rolling and rolling I'm wearing my rings which probably wasn't a great idea they're a bit, a bit uh, clunking against it so keep going like that and look you can see now it's becoming much much smoother I'm looking for difficult spots And uh, this bit you're going to have to do between your finger and thumb because it's not uh, reached by the uh, using that flat sheet. So I'm just going to use a knife to cut that out at the end. Let's see how we're getting on here. Whoops, I'm crazy. Um, I've got to see what I'm doing. I'm just put that in there and just trim around see what's occurring flatten it down with my fingers maybe flatten it on there hmm just keep neatening it up and I don't want to find out that I can't fit the pen in there when I'm done so I'll have another look at it in a minute it's looking very good now pulling it together, pushing it. <laughs> it's quite a long winded process in some ways but if you are patient about it you do get a very nice result. I can sort of pinch that in towards the end as well to make it a bit rounded. Now I'm looking for little gaps. Hold. It's kind of boring doing this in a way. There's a lot of repetitive stuff with this process, but it's worth it because the, the um, more effort you put into it, as with most things, the better the result you get out. And yeah, now that looks pretty good to me. That feels pretty smooth. I'll um, do the last minute adjustments, but I'll show you how I'm going to bake it. So let me make, I'll just use this. Now, when I bake this, I've um, my oven at the moment is uh, broken, my big oven. <laughs> so I'm going to bake it in a little oven. So I'm going to put it on a tile, and I've just made this contraption. I'm so mad. <laughs> I can't. Someone borrowed my bulldog clips, so 
I've just put a couple of safety pins on there really and I've made like a sad little zigzag of cardboard that's just for one pen so it's quite often I would make a lot of them in a big tin and um, what I do with it now it's got something in it what I do with it now is I just pop it in that V and I'll close the lid Ta -da! stand it on the tile and I will bake it in the oven with an oven thermometer according to the manufacturer's instructions for let's say half an hour and um, <clears throat> this will just keep it all protected from getting scorched or anything and I will come back when it is baked and tell you how I finished it and show you the results. Well I'm back and here is our pen barrel and it's come out really really nicely. Now when I took it out of the oven it was slightly dull and a little bit dingy where we'd been sort of rubbing it and rolling it. Um, so I used wet and dry sandpaper and I've got that here. Started with 400, move it up to 600, then 800, then 1000. So things in, in that region, wet and dry sandpaper. And I just used it, um, mostly I did the 400, sort of smooth it all out. And then um, after that, you don't need to use them as for as long. And then just in a circular motion under the tap, running tap, and, and maybe long ways as well. Just all the ways to make it smooth. And it's come out really nicely. And then I polished it with a bit, a section of men's underpants. <laughs> I know people sometimes use denim. Uh, and you know, if you've got a machine that polishes, like you've got a polishing thing on your Dremel or whatever, you could use that. So the next thing to do now is to put the ends back into the pen. And I would use the same amount of care that I used when I was taking the end out of the pen. So let's use these. See if I put the pants over, maybe I can use that. I don't want to um, mark that now. Okay, that sounds good. And there it is and here's the finished pen and uh, it writes oh yeah you should check that before you start <laughs> um, yeah so there it is I hope you enjoyed that and hope you can see how really simple it was to do and you'll give it a go yourself maybe I would have done this end a bit more delicately but hey it's quirky I like it if you did enjoy this and you want to see more videos from me it really helps if you like and subscribe um, leave any comments or questions down below and I will be happy to help you. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.